Hello my friends and welcome back to the rabbit hole and welcome to my video discussing the similarities and differences between six Korean beauty sunscreens. You guessed it, it's another video where I'm applying one sunscreen to half my face and another to the other half. And you might be wondering, why do you like doing that so much, Alice? What do you gain from it? It's so interesting, I notice that when I do this, I can pick up on even the really tiny details between sunscreens. And you all seem to enjoy that as well, so that is the game plan today with six sunscreens, including some of the current most popular sunscreens. We have some hybrid sunscreens today and also some mineral sunscreens. I did not forget those of you with much more sensitive skin. As always, there are timestamps and links in the description box below and let's get a few disclaimers out of the way. Don't actually do what I'm doing unless you plan to wash it off afterwards because of course the way sunscreen works is it creates an even layer on your skin to protect you from the sun's rays. Hard to get an even layer when you're just applying half on half of your face. Please leave the experimentation to the you. Get it? You YouTuber, get it? Get it? Fine, I really just wanted to show you my potato. That is not any kind of euphemism. And finally, today's video is in partnership with the wonderful Skin1004. However, all opinions in this video are my own. Let's go ahead and get this party started with a comparison between the incredibly popular Beauty of Joseon sunscreen and a new sunscreen release from Skin1004. I figured it would be most helpful if I start this video with a good reference point, the Beauty of Joseon sunscreen. I will be applying one finger length to each half of my face, totaling two fingers for the full face. And because I have reviewed this sunscreen in the past, and you've probably heard about it from other channels as well, I'm going to show you the application of this one at 2x speed. Now, in all fairness, this is a fantastic sunscreen. It is free of essential oils, it is free of fragrance, and it is using four of the newest and best filters out there in terms of sun protection. It contains some rice and probiotics, I know go figure because of its name. However, what I want you to know about this sunscreen is that for as gorgeous as it is, and look at that, you already don't see a white cast. The catch for me with this one is that I feel like I have to spend some amount of time buffing it into my skin, kind of like I would a bit of a heavier moisturizer. The finish that this gives is definitely dewy and glowy, and again, absolutely no white cast. I think this will work great for all skin tones. Now let's move on to the new Skin1004 sunscreen. This one actually comes in a pump-squeeze tube combination, similar in consistency to the Beauty of Joseon. Now I want you to know I'm applying this in real time, because I want you to see how long this application really takes. And as you watch me apply this, I will tell you a little more about the ingredients. So just like the Beauty of Joseon, this has those same four top tier filters. Best sun protection that you can currently get. It also contains some Sika, a fantastic calming ingredient, a little bit of niacinamide, a wonderful ingredient for evening out your skin tone. Aside from that quick moment where I needed to push my hair out of the way, did you see how fast this application is? Again, this is real time. What I think is going on is that they're calling this the Water Fit Serum sunscreen, and it does have the consistency of a watery serum, meaning it sinks in so fast, it feels so lightweight on your skin. And this combination makes for probably the fastest sunscreen application I have ever experienced. And for our final comparison, y'all, I feel like I spent so much time looking for minute differences between these, and yet what I'm gonna say is they really look similar on the skin with maybe a little bit less dewiness on the Skin1004 side. However, what is different is the way these two feel. The Skin1004 is so light, I don't think I've ever experienced a sunscreen that is quite this light before. So what I'll ultimately conclude is that if you feel the beauty of Joseon is just a little bit too heavy for your preferences, I would highly recommend giving the Skin1004 Water Fit Sunscreen a try. For our next comparison, let's talk about a little bit of a newer release, the Marion May Sunscreen versus an older sunscreen and a hybrid from Tium. 
Let's start this section with the Mary and May Sika Soothing Sun Cream. I have heard a lot of confusion around this sunscreen, so I want to make sure to say this is absolutely chemical filters, not physical. The ingredients list that you are seeing on the screen is the correct one that matches my box. It is not the same as what's shown on the Yes Style website, and also note that this product does contain fragrance. This one has, again, the same four newest filters that we talked about with the first two sunscreens, but something you may notice in the ingredients here is that it actually contains those active constituents found within Sika. As far as application, like the last sunscreen, this too is real time, and you can probably see that this is applying very similarly to the Beauty of Joseon sunscreen. No issues with blending it in, a little bit of a dewiness left behind, but no white cast. Let's move on to our only hybrid sunscreen, the TM Vita Red Sunscreen. In advance, I know this is not going to be for everybody. It is our only PA3 Plus in this video. It does contain some fragrance. It does contain some alcohol. And yet, it's interesting to include this because it is using some of the older filters. I do believe this is the oldest formulation in this video. I do want to point out a few things with the ingredients here. So you may notice the low level of vitamin C that is not at the level to fight hyperpigmentation. However, you may choose to have vitamin C in a sunscreen for its antioxidant properties at which that level would be appropriate. Now also note, as this does contain fragrance, this has a strong smell. It smells very strongly of oranges or citrus. And what I find so interesting in viewing this application is that it looks like the thickest sunscreen in this whole video. And yet, to its credit, it does absorb into your skin, and it leaves it actually surprisingly matte in the end. I do think that's a result of using some ethanol in this product. As you may know, some Japanese sunscreens use this also to help with mattifying the final product. Again, I recognize this won't be for everybody, but it is interesting to see this side by side and notice how it is not as shiny as the Marion May side. For our final comparison, I do want to say I feel that these are the two most different sunscreens from each other. You can see the clear, uh, kind of neutral finish on the skin from the TM side, whereas the Marion May does still have a bit of a dewiness. I also want to make sure to comment on the smell of the Marion May to my nose. I would have thought this is just a masking fragrance, but I asked my sweetie the super smeller, and according to her, it has a faint floral smell, a little bit of something like Jasmine. I must tell you all, I am so grateful to have her because my nose, it is just not that finely tuned. Our final comparison is two mineral sunscreens, and yet both are SPF 50 plus. Really quickly, the Rovectin was gifted to me by YesStyle. Let's see how these compare. I'm starting with the Rovectin mineral sunscreen. Please note this is the only section that will not be in real time, as it takes roughly about four times as long to apply mineral sunscreens as chemical sunscreen. Before we even talk about application, we have to talk about the ingredients. The ingredients that you are seeing, I had to type out every single one of them as this is not what you will find on pretty much any retailer site, at least to my knowledge. You need to know that this product contains coconut oil now, even if the former generation did not. Now listen, here's the thing with coconut oil. It works for some people, but it doesn't work for everyone. I'm not sure if the fault is on the retailers or the brand, but I do feel that customers need to receive a product that matches the ingredients they observed on the retailer's website. Now, to tell you more about this coconut oil, I feel like this explains the way that this product applies. Imagine taking coconut oil and mixing it into a mineral sunscreen. That's what this applies like. It feels like it really glides on your skin, and yet, something you may be able to notice from these clips is that it seems to be taking me a really long time to buff this into my skin. The total application in this video is over four minutes of me applying this to half of my face to minimize that white cast. In the end, I feel like the white cast isn't too bad, and yet keep in mind that my skin tone is pretty light. To its credit, I will say that this acts as a nice primer if you do choose to apply makeup on top of it. Our second sunscreen is the Axis Y Complete No Stress Physical Sunscreen SPF 50. 
It feels pretty much identical to the Rovectin, and yet the ingredients are quite different. Admittedly, I still had a bit of a struggle finding the correct ingredients list for this latest version. However, thankfully, it doesn't seem to be as different as the Rovectin. Some important notes with this one. So if you look at the ingredients, you don't see the word fragrance, but you do see a list of essential oils. As always, I prefer companies disclose those ingredients rather than just list them under the word fragrance. And what's really interesting about the texture and application here is that this seems like a thicker sunscreen, and yet it was about half the amount of time as applying the Rovectin. I felt so surprised by this because the reality is I would have expected the opposite. But yeah, this was actually fairly quick to apply, almost as if it sinks into my skin more rapidly regardless of how it initially feels. The time has come for our final up-close comparison. I do feel surprised by how similar these look on the skin after the application is said and done, given how different the application itself really is. But if you nitpick, if you get up close, you will notice that there's more of a glow on the Rovectin side, and I would say there also is a little bit more of a white cast on that side. And my friends, that brings us to the end of this sunscreen comparison video. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. Have you tried these sunscreens? Do you agree with my assessments? Again, remember, if you are interested, there are links to these products in the description box below. Thank you again to Skin1004 for working with me on today's video. If you enjoyed, make sure to like and hit the subscribe button. Have a wonderful rest of your day, and I will see you all next time.